friends welcome back to my channel if you're new my name's amanda so in today's what's for dinner i've got some really yummy recipes for y'all including a sandwich that it's kind of a twist on that viral tiktok sandwich that had been going around i knew it seemed like something i would like and so i kind of did my own thing with that so i'm excited to share that with y'all it is so good and I even use my Cuisinart griddler to make smash burgers inside. So no, you don't need a Blackstone or anything like that. You can do it inside with the Cuisinart griddler. I had actually had that thing forever and I was just kind of forgot about it. And it was one of those things. And I was like, I wonder if that would work for that. And I can't believe I left it in my cabinet that long. I should have used it a long time ago. It worked great. So I'm excited to show you all these recipes. I hope you enjoy this video, but let's go ahead and get into it. So we're gonna get started on our smash burgers. Y'all, I'm so tickled with this appliance. Like I cannot believe I let it sit in my cabinet for so long. Um, but I've got some tater tots going into the oven. I've got my meat here ready to go. And we're just going to preheat our griddle. I believe I do like 400, I think is what it is. And I go ahead and smash them down first. And then I go ahead and season them after that. That way that they're nice and like flat and I can get the seasoning all over it, you know. And I just use salt and pepper. Obviously, you could use whatever seasoning that you like to use. But these like, I cannot tell you how much I love making burgers this way. So I'm not someone who likes like a really thick burger patty. I just don't. And I love things like that, even like, you know, steak and shake, like their type of thinness and that type of thing. And so, um, I, every time I make burgers at home, I'm never exactly happy with them. And this is like perfect for me. So I was so tickled. I still cannot believe I haven't used this griddler until I start trying these burgers in it. But I just smash them down really, really good, really tight for a couple of seconds and then just let them cook it takes about five minutes and they're done like i mean it's so fast and so easy like you know and i hate having to mess with like making the patties for long and it doesn't take you but just a second to roll out that you know the meat like for this so it's like so much easier than than regular burgers in my opinion and if you have one of these griddlers this would definitely be a great way to use it because Everyone in our family feels like the burgers are, are just way better in this. Um, now, you can cook it a little less if you want to. I do feel like five minutes probably cooks it to a fairly high temperature, but we feel like it's still been pretty, like, you know, uh, it's not overly dry or anything like that. But obviously, you know, you can adjust that. You can always use a thermometer to check the temperature as well. But since it's cooking it from both sides, it actually, you know, the top and the bottom, it gets done faster. And so that's what really impresses me. I can actually like, you know, do quite a few patties in a very short amount of time. And that's really awesome because then I can have leftovers, free some or whatever. And it just literally wipes right off there. That's another thing that blows my mind. But, um, and of course I just put those in the dishwasher. I scrub them down and put them in the dishwasher. But it also is a great way to um, do your buns. So I'm actually going to toast my buns like this too. And you can do like you know, more than you can in just a, a typical skillet. And so you can actually even lay that flat, but I didn't want to do that since it was already so hot. I think I would have had to touch it, you know, and obviously you can't do that when it's that hot, but um, you could definitely lay it flat and do like pancakes and like, uh, you know, grilled cheeses or, you know, whatever. So lots of different ways to use it. This also has like a grill side, like that has like the little grill grates. So you can just flip these plates over and um, I have not used that feature yet, but I need to do that and see how that is. So I guess the grill side would probably be a little bit more kind of like similar to like George Foreman grill, things like that. Um, if you have one of these, please let me know what you've made in yours down below in the comment section, because I am totally in love with this appliance now and I want to use it more. And so um, it is definitely, in my opinion, as much as I love the burgers, as much as my family loves the burgers on it, it's well worth it just from the burgers alone. But I would love to be able to branch out and do some other things in it. Now, I will tell you that um, I think you could probably make the patties thinner if you made, you know, if you patted the, if you're not patted them out, but if you rolled them out smaller, because one day I did have a little less uh, meat and I did do a smaller one and they, they were a lot thinner. So that would probably be more like the smash burger type, but I thought these were 
amazing just like they are they were perfect size for us and uh, you just can't beat it like the best burger i've ever made at home and not even adding anything really special to it and so all you do is you afterward all this like the grease and liquids and stuff get in go into this little um like you know tray and you throw that in the dishwasher and you're good to go so next i've got my twist on that viral TikTok sandwich. I've seen this everywhere and it looked like my perfect kind of sandwich because I love, like, I'm a type person that, like, if I go to Subway, I, I ask for more veggies. I want more veggies on my sandwich than I do meat. So I love, like, almost like a vegetable sandwich with a little bit of meat. And so this, I knew this would be something I would enjoy. So I'm just cutting up some red onion, kind of, you know, trying to slice it fairly thinly. Um, I'm also going to cut up some tomatoes because I always have to have tomatoes on my sandwich. I absolutely love tomatoes, um, especially like when they're in the summer and you get, you know, farm fresh tomatoes. Those are definitely the best kind. But I'm going to add some mayonnaise to my bowl. And I did not go by a recipe. It's just based on what I've kind of seen from people. I'm also adding some Italian seasoning and then some red wine vinegar. And I will tell you that like when I have gotten Subway sandwiches, I actually get like extra vinegar on mine. I don't even do the oil. I love that tangy taste to it. And especially since I tried to watch my sodium, that vinegar can like kind of compensate for salt because it gives you that kind of, you know, tanginess to it. Um, and I've just got some shredded lettuce here I'm putting in here and I'm just making... Like I said, just kind of doing my own thing. I didn't measure proportions. I feel like this is something you can very easily like taste it. And if you want a little more vinegar or whatever. So I've just got a little bit of my onion in there. The lettuce, the mayonnaise, the Italian seasoning, and the vinegar. And once I've kind of made sure it looks kind of about what I want it to look like. I'm going to go ahead and put some mayonnaise on my bread. And I actually like to toast my like meat up and stuff like that. I just feel... Like, I, even when I've gotten sandwiches out places, I love it when I can get it, like, toasted. And so, I'm going to go ahead and put, you know, mayonnaise on the side that doesn't have any meat. And then, I've got some turkey. And I actually used also some chicken, like, um, chicken lunch meat. The turkey I use is actually no salt added. And so, I love that. And then, I add a little bit of the um, chicken that does have salt in it. So, it kind of adds a little bit of flavor there. But I've got that toasted. I just put it under the broiler. And I just think it makes such a difference on sandwiches. It makes it so good. And that cheese all nice and melty. And I'm just going to top it with my lettuce mixture. When I say that I am obsessed with the sandwich, I cannot explain how obsessed with the sandwich I am. Because it is the most delicious sandwich I think I've ever had. I would take this over any sandwich I've had out anywhere. It is so good. Like, and that salad, like, I would almost just eat that salad just by itself. It's so good. Um, so, I cannot recommend this enough. Like, if you like sandwiches, and this is such a, like, an easy, like, I know you're broiling the meat, but you don't have, or broiling the sandwich part, but you don't have to do that. Um, as it gets hotter through the summer, it would be a great thing to make so that you don't have to heat up your kitchen. But, y'all, you've got to try this. It is so good. I wish I had one right now because it is one of my favorite things ever to eat. <laughs> so, and now we're going to do some breakfast for dinner. And I don't know about y'all, but I absolutely love breakfast for dinner. This is the Swaggerty sausage I always use. It's all natural. It doesn't have like, um, you know, some of the additives, some of the other sausage does, that they tend to bother me. And it also is the lowest sodium sausage I've been able to find. So, uh, and so I'm just going to, I actually like do the whole box and then I freeze whatever I don't use. We're going to use some to make these sausage muffins I make. And then we're going to make some of it to make gravy. And so I've just got two cups of flour and a tablespoon of baking powder in there that I, you know, mix, mixed together. And I added some cheese and some cooked sausage. That's about six patties that I use crumbled. And then I've got a cup of milk mixed with an egg that we're going to put in there. And that's all you do. It's super simple. And it's just regular plain all-purpose flour, not like self-rising or anything like that. And we're just going to mix that up. And we're going to take an ice cream scoop and just scoop it out on a baking tray. These are the best biscuits. Like, they're so good. And um, one of my kids just, like, 
I, he was just saying, he was like, I should ask you to make these for my birthday. He kind of forgot about them because um, they're like one of his favorite things. But he, we, I hadn't made them in a while. And he was like, yeah, I should have definitely had you make some of these on my birthday. But, um, yeah, you just simply bake them at 400 for about 20 minutes. Just keep an eye on them. You know, uh, ovens cook differently and stuff like that. And I typically get, you know, usually 13 to 16 muffins. It kind of depends. I don't really know why it varies. But, um, and we're going to go ahead and make some scrambled eggs to go with this. I love having biscuits and gravy and scrambled eggs and all that. And those biscuits are so delicious to use with um, gravy. And so I just, you know, mix some half and half with some eggs there. And I just, you know, basically keep going around the pan until everything gets done. Once it gets pretty close to looking, you know, pretty much done, I go ahead and turn the eye off and I cover it with a plate just to kind of let it finish up any little areas that might not be fully cooked. And I sit it to the side. Now these are our muffins or biscuits or I guess they're more like drop biscuits. I don't really know um, what you really call them. but And I've got a little bit of sausage. This is probably about three patties of sausage in here. And I've added a fourth a cup of butter to that because this sausage doesn't really have a ton of grease. And then I'm going to add a fourth a cup of flour. And then I do two cups of milk. Now that's kind of my, you know, like, base but like as I'm cooking it if I feel like it's too thick then I'm going to go ahead and add a little more milk so I did actually end up adding I think almost maybe a cup more milk um so just kind of go by what it looks like what it feels like you know and what kind of gravy you like some people might like a thinner gravy um you know I like mine to be you know not very thin but kind of have that thickness to it so you just kind of have to keep an eye on it. The big thing you just need to keep in mind is you can always add more liquid, but it becomes much harder to thicken it back up because, you know, obviously as you made that roux with the flour and, you know, the butter and all that, you can't just do that easily again because you have all the liquid in there. And so um, I added just a little bit of pepper here, but I just love biscuits and gravy. I don't make this a whole lot, but um, man, when I do, it's like one of my favorite breakfasts <laughs> because uh, that's, and, and so having it for dinner is perfect because um, I'm a big type person where I don't really like care if it's for, you know, breakfast or lunch or dinner. Um, it's just whatever tastes good at the time, you know. So I've got me one of those biscuits and I'll split that open, get me some of my scrambled eggs, and then I'm gonna layer that gravy on top of that biscuit. Oh my goodness y'all so good um and i just love using those sausage biscuits for that because you kind of have your meat baked into your biscuit so thank y'all so much for joining me today i hope you've enjoyed this video if you did i'd appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up i hope y'all are having a blessed day and i'll see you in the next one